welcome to the next project. This is episode four of my unofficial Great Guitar Build Off 21 build along challenge to myself. In uh, this project, I'm building a Gretsch inspired big hollow body electric guitar kind of thing. Uh, and it's coming along. The back has some holes in it now that, uh, no, Gretsch doesn't do that, but I do, um, that uh, I'm gonna use for future advancements to this project. Uh, the front has a couple F holes started, uh, beginning holes for controls, and we're gonna talk about that as the show goes along. Um, this is close to being ready for gluing the back on. It's not glued on yet, it's just kinda stuck in place at the moment. But we've got a lot of things going on inside and a lot of learning happening. So let's start the next project. doing a little bit of work that probably wasn't really necessary. This guitar has like a two and a half, almost two and three quarter tall side total. I don't think there would be too much flex, but uh, decided to put these little uh, ribs in on the sides anyway, partially to cover up the uh, issue I had making one of the sides. If you remember back a couple of episodes, um, one of the sides had a ripple on the inner layers of the veneer that I had to fix. So this is a good way to cover it up and hide it. figure out a way to keep this big body electric guitar from becoming a feedback monster. So I attempted to do a bunch of research, but there wasn't a bunch of reference material. I, I checked the big brands to see how they had handled um, this type of an issue, and it really came back to Gretsch once again, and uh, their implementation of what's called trestle bracing. And this goes way back to like Chet Atkins era, I believe. So I, I looked for discussions and comments and photos and any information I could get on it. And I took all of that and twisted it and turned it into my interpretation of what they're doing. And I hope it all goes well. We'll find out. Uh, it'll probably get changed if and when I build another one of these. You may have seen videos um, showing people sanding ribs to fit the inside contour of a top or a back. And I believe they are typically using a wood like spruce for that, which really makes sense. Spruce uh, is lightweight, strong, and sands a whole lot easier than this mahogany. But we use what we have on hand and try to learn from uh, the process. Did I mention that I really need to sharpen my chisels? The uh, trestle system mock-up here. I've got the uh, two long ribs on the underside of the top and two posts that will connect the top and the back together to complete the trestle. Here I'm uh, checking the glue up of the two short rails on the back and verifying um, their distance to the center line and then I also verify uh, that to the inside of the top to make sure I have the, the, the top and the back rails lined up as closely as I could. 
Uh, overall, this went really well. I think I'm off by about a 64th of an inch, so not too much. Using a little tape to hold things in place, well, I figure out how I'm going to compress these. And it's always good to have, uh, you know, some boat anchors laying around. With the ribs glued to the underside of the top and the back, I had just uh, decided I needed to square them up to each other, make sure they're level across the two. That way, when I glue that trestle between the top and the back, everything is going to be on the same plane. At least, that's what my brain is telling me. I haven't sharpened my chisels yet. That's coming soon though. It's going pretty good. I uh, have the, the rails, the ribs glued on the top and the back. That all went really well. I then, uh, as we see, uh, leveled, planed them both to the same height, thickness, square, um, which worked out really well. Just used some double stick tape, uh, some scrap lumber laying around, and a couple different router bits. Um, and I have these uh, trestle piers, I don't even know what to call them. Uh, this whole idea is kind of borrowed from Gretsch. Um, they did it totally different, but my inspiration is from Gretsch. Um, I used uh, mahogany for all these pieces, and I think, um, from what I've read, Gretsch originally uh, probably used pine for their trestle bracing, and then maybe more recently is using spruce. Again, I don't know, just what I read on the internet, and we all know how reliable the internet is. So we'll... We'll play along and say, yeah, they use, they use wood. Uh, so anyway, I'm using mahogany just because it's what I had on hand. I had some clear pine, but I didn't like the way the grain was running and I was afraid it wouldn't really be stable enough in the long run. Um, this mahogany that I have is, even though it's scrap, it's really good stuff. So I cut all my pieces, glued it up with tight bond, went really well. Um, after I planed the, the main rails or the ribs down, um, I figured I'd need to trim these down. I, I guesstimated my height and I thought I was gonna be about an eighth of an inch too tall. As it turns out, I'm pretty much exactly where I need to be, which is exciting. I thought I'd be off and I was hoping I'd have to trim down and not add on. And if I had to add on, depending on how much, I could always put veneers on here and make it decorative and pretty for anybody who looks inside. Got a lot of weird things going on. Anyway, let's continue with the next project. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you uh, are seeing a reoccurring theme here. I tend to make a lot of little templates for things. And I also try to do things freehand on occasion. And usually I end up stopping and uh, you know, going back and making a template. So here I'm just doing some little uh, repetitive templates, doing a stacked templates in fact. I, I create one and then use it to make another and then I pin them so they align perfectly. That way when I'm routing or cutting through, if I only need one thickness of uh, template, I can just use one piece. If I need a double thickness, I have both pieces ready to go.
Oh, oh boy. I hope you weren't looking. You weren't supposed to see that. Oh, don't look. Look away. Look away. Look away. Oh dear. Still working on some templates. Um, these again are quarter inch MDF templates and uh, MDF was a very affordable thing at one time. Now, just like everything else, it's expensive. Um, but again, doing a, a, a double thickness or stack template that has toothpick pins that hold the two pieces together. So I finish one half of it, one, one thickness, and uh, rough out a second thickness, and then use the router with the pieces pinned together to make a stacked template. There comes a time when people get mad at me, and this could be the time. As we know, the uh, project has been on the shelf for a long time, and not that this is a new idea I've been having, but it's getting to the point where I'm going to get after it. Uh, as we know, this guitar is inspired by the Gretsch 6120 um, electromatic style guitars with some modifications. Um, and there's a model, I think it's called the Hot Rod, that is kind of a stripped down version of those. It has one uh, selector switch and one master volume, and that's it. Simple controls, I like it. However, that's where I'll start with this um, experiment. I foresee in the future maybe going to uh, additional controls, and I want to prepare for that. So what I'm going to do on the back is cut the, con uh, the cover out of the contour of this back and uh, two little, you know, like a switch and uh, master control, master volume control uh, covers right out of this. And I'm not going to put uh, like a plastic plate in there for cover plate. I'm actually going to cut this out with a really fine engraving bit and reuse the cutouts as the covers. So hopefully it'll look good. I've done this once before and it turned out really well. I hope it goes as well this time. Preparing to make those first cuts in the back, it's a little nerve wracking. I was hoping for the best, but halfway expecting something to really go terrible. And I was thinking, what's my backup plan if I had to destroy this? And I never did come up with a backup plan. Um, I'm using a 0 0.08 millimeter engraving bit for this on a Dremel style tool, a rotary tool. And I'm only able to take about a half a millimeter uh, depth of cut uh, per pass. And some areas, since it's not level, I actually have to make extra passes because in some places you're only hitting a high spot on one side. And anyway, I put some uh, painter's tape down first to protect the veneer. And then I use some double-sided tape on that, which is pretty aggressive. Um, but the painter tape uh, helps me keep from pulling the veneer fibers apart when I remove the template. Overall, this process went really well, except for one little hiccup I had, and we'll see that. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. So I have to learn how to fix boo-boos too. It went pretty well. There were a couple of moments when uh, I was thinking, oh crap, this is not gonna work. But overall it went pretty good. Uh, this, the back is six ply and it cut pretty slow. I think I had to make about a dozen really, really shallow passes um, on each one just to get through. And there was only one little hiccup. This may not even pick it up. I'll put a picture in the video if it doesn't show up right here. That's because I was not going clockwise. I backed up <clears throat> and the uh, spinning router bit decided to uh, go for a little walk. So always pay attention to what you're doing when you're running a router, even a little bitty uh, Dremel style 
Um, the bit will try to carry things off. Otherwise it went well. And I don't see this as a failure. I see it as a learning opportunity. I uh, have to learn how to fix that. <laughs> so let's continue with whatever it is I'm working on next. I'd actually kind of figured out a way to mount these um, cavity covers back to the body. I did this same basic process on a Harley Benton mod project I did a year ago or so. And I made a ledge that we're seeing the beginning of here and I glued it to the inside of the body and then the cavity cover rests on that when it's dropped into the hole. Um, these pieces are made from veneer, the same veneer I used to uh, make the, the top and the back and the sides actually. Um, so I just glued up some scraps of veneer and pressed them against the original form, uh, let them sit for a few days and uh, dry out and harden and then uh, as you're seeing here, uh, cut them out to shape and made some nice little ledges for mounting to. Watch that finger. Keep an eye on it. You might be going, is he wiping that glue on the underside of the bench or on his pants? Well, I honestly, both. Um, I do my own laundry, so it's okay, and I plan to make a new top for my bench someday too, so it's all good. When I started this project, I wasn't sure what I was going to do for an output jack, whether I'd have um, the jack protrude out the face of the guitar which I'm not a big fan of visually, I don't think it looks good. It's convenient, but anyway. Um, but what I'm going with is uh, just a block glued to the inside that I will drill a hole through and put a Telecaster style jack in there. I don't know the right way to do a lot of these things, so I try and invent um, things that I'm capable of doing, like using a paper, uh, just laser paper template, to locate the F holes on either side of the body, kind of a mirror reflection, uh, mirror image of the placement, and jumping right back to using the templates. And you'll see I put a notch in the bottom uh, matching template here, and that was just to fit around the contour of the top. There's just enough hump in the top right there that by, by removing that piece of template, um, it actually sits pretty flat. And it turned out all right. I want to thank everybody for uh, hanging with me and coming back to revisit this project that uh, should have been done, what, seven or eight months ago. Um, the 2021 GGBO is long over, like almost, well, the next one starts probably any day. And here we are. So uh, thanks again. Please ring the bell, hit the thumbs up button, a smiley face, uh, whatever there is. Leave some comments. Really enjoy hearing from you guys. And until next time, be safe and take care and sharpen your chisels. Take care.